Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, we are studying about the uh, insulin. Uh, so far we have studied about the synthesis of insulin, its uh, receptor and the mechanism of secretion of insulin. Uh, now in today's lecture we will see uh, about the effect of insulin on carbohydrate metabolism. We know that uh, insulin, it exerts its effects on carbohydrate proteins in lipids. Uh, so first of all, we will see the effect of insulin on the carbohydrate metabolism. Insulin it acts on the liver, adipose tissue and the skeletal muscle. Uh, now what is the effect of insulin on the muscle? Uh, the normal resting muscle, it is only slightly permeable to glucose. And the exercising muscle, it become more permeable to glucose uh, even in the absence of insulin. Um, but when a uh, few hours after meal, when there is increased blood glucose level, uh, then pancreas secretes insulin and it uh, promotes the rapid transport of glucose into the muscle cells. So it promotes muscle glucose uptake and metabolism. And also uh, the second point is the storage of glycogen in muscle that when the glucose is transported in abundance, so the, it will be changed into the glycogen and this glycogen then can be used later for energy by the muscle. Okay, now you can see in the diagram also that uh, this is the uh, blood blood glucose level and when there will be increased blood glucose level it is the stimulus for the insulin release so pancreas from the pancreas from the beta cells of the pancreas insulin is released and insulin then it acts it binds with the receptors and it causes the uptake of glucose into the skeletal muscle now, what is the effect of insulin on liver? Uh, in liver, it has got multiple effects and it activates or inactivates multiple enzymes. Uh, first of all, it uh, inactivates liver phosphorylase. Um, so, uh, and by inactivating the liver phosphorylase, it inhibits glycogenolysis. That is, uh, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose is inhibited by insulin by inactivating the enzyme liver phosphorylase. Uh, it also, it increases the uptake of glucose uh, from the blood into the liver. So uh, once inside the liver, uh, glucose, it is phosphorylated by the enzyme gluco uh, glucokinase. So the insulin, it activates the enzyme glucokinase and it causes the phosphorylation of the glucose. And once the glucose is phosphorylated, then it is trapped in the liver cells and it cannot diffuse back to the cell membrane because phosphorylated glucose cannot uh, diffuse back into the blood. Also, the next point is that insulin, it increases glycogenesis. That is, it promotes the formation of glycogen from the glucose by activating the enzyme glycogen synthase. And it also, it inhibits gluconeogenesis. That is, the formation of new glucose, it is inhibited by the insulin. So all these effects, that is the inhibition of glycogenolysis and uh, increased uptake of glucose into the liver cells and uh, phosphorylating the glucose and increasing glycogenesis and inhibiting gluconeogenesis. So what is the net effect of the insulin. The net effect of the insulin is that it causes decrease in the blood glucose levels. So when there is decreased blood glucose level, then what happened at pancreas, it causes decreased release of insulin. So insulin will be released in lesser amount and when decrease uh, insulin, uh, when there will be a decreased insulin, so there will be decreased uptake of glucose into the liver. So um, now what happened when the insulin is decreased? Then two enzymes are activated. Liver phosphorylase, which we have studied before, 
uh, which uh, causes glycogenolysis but it is inactivated by insulin so when insulin is uh, decreased liver phosphorylase is activated and um, it causes glycogenolysis that is the breakdown of glycogen into the glucose phosphate and the second enzyme which is activated is glucose phosphatase uh, the function of glucose phosphatase is that it split the phosphate radical away from the glucose and thus making the phosphorylated glucose free. And uh, as we have discussed before, that uh, the free glucose, uh, that can diffuse back into the blood. But the phosphorylated glucose, uh, it will be trapped in the liver and cannot diffuse back into the blood. But when the phosphate radical is split away from the glucose, it will be a free glucose and it can diffuse back into the blood. Okay. Now, um, when the glucose entering the liver, it is more than can be stored as glycogen. Then what happens that insulin, it uh, promotes the conversion of excess glucose into the fatty acids, which is packaged as triacylglycerides and in a very low density lipoprotein. So triglycerides, uh, they are the storage form of the lipids. And in, in this form, it is transported uh, to the adipose tissue and deposited as fats. So insulin also, it causes deposition of fats. So summarizing the function of insulin on carbohydrate metabolism, that insulin, it lowered the blood glucose level and... Um, it, by causing the increased entry of glucose into the muscle and the adipose tissue. Uh, and then it increases liver glycogenesis. It increases glycolysis and it inhibits the glucose production from the liver. Okay. Now what happened when there is lack of uh, insulin? the lack of effect of insulin on glucose uptake and usage by the brain. Okay, a brain, it normally use glucose for energy and they can use fat for the energy only with the difficulty. So uh, we all know that most of the brain cells, they are permeable to glucose and uh, they can use glucose without the intermediation of insulin. And also, uh, brain is very much dependent on glucose because uh, uh, they readily need glucose for energy. And that's why uh, the blood, it's very essential that blood glucose level should always be maintained above the critical level. Uh, when blood glucose level it falls uh, into a range of 20 to 50 milligram per 100 ml, then symptoms of hypoglycemic shock will develop and the patient may go into the nervous irritability, which lead to the fainting, scissors, and coma. So uh, this was all about the effect of insulin on the carbohydrate metabolism. Thank you so much, students.